We continue now at the top of Daf Chav Gimel Amid Beis of Masech Asota. This is Sota Daf Twenty Three B. The Gemara is in the middle of discussing the Karba Mincha of the wife of a Kohen. So you bring the Kometz on the Mizbech, and the question is, what do you do with the remainder? You can't eat the remainder because the Kohen himself he has a chelik in the Karba Mincha, and when it comes to a Karba Mincha from a Kohen, so then you're not supposed to eat the remainder. It all gets burned on the Mizbech. But on the other hand, it's really the Karba Mincha of the wife of the Kohen. She really has a chelik, but so what do you do with the Shirayim? And so the Gemara suggested you do what Rebbe Lozer Rebbe Shimon said in a different context. Context by Minchas Chote, you take the Shirayim, you take the remainder, and you scatter it over the ashes. And the Gemara explains, Vafilu Rabbonon, now even the Rabbonon, Lo Pligio led Rebelozer Brebi Shimon, Elo Minchas Chote Shal Kohanim. They were only arguing with Rebelozer Brebi Shimon in that particular case by the Minchas Chote that's brought by the Kohanim. The Basakravi, that's something that can be offered on the Mizbeach. Avol Baha, but in this situation, Afilu Rabbonon Modu, even the Rabbonon would agree, again, that it gets scattered over the ashes. Rashi explains, Vafilu Rabbonon that's something that can be brought, meaning In other words, we compare this minchas chote, which is an obligation carbon, to the carbon mincha of nedava, the carbon mincha that's a donation by a kohen. In that situation, it doesn't require kmitza, and so therefore the rabbanon they disagree with the rabbanos of Rabbi Shimon's solution. But here, where it's really not a bas hakrava, here you're talking about a situation where the dilma basra di doazlin and. Maybe really it's her carbon and not his. That's the question over here. The Shiraim Gemurim Ninu, there's a real possibility that, that these are real Shiraim, so to speak, that need to that are not to be brought in the Mizbeach at all. They're supposed to be eaten. So what do you do in this situation? The Afilu Rabbonan Modu de Mispazrin. So even the Rabbonan would agree in this situation where you have a genuine doubt, so to speak, about the Shiraim, even the Rabbonan would say it's Mispazrin that you scatter it among the ashes. And the Gemara continues with the two dots. The Mishnah said, Bas Yisrael Hanesu of Echulu. It said, if you have a Bas Yisrael that's married to a Kohen, and the Gemara says, My time, what is the reason? Rashi says, My time, a Kohen Mas Nisin, Minchas Kohenes Nechelas. Why is it that the Mishnah says that the Karma Mincha of a Kohenes, meaning it's a female, not a male Kohen, so that's going to be eaten, Kishayin and Nesu Kohen, talking about a situation where she's not married to a Kohen, so a male Kohen has no Chalik in it. Or Kishin Nesu Kohen, even when she's married to a Kohen, Ena Nechelas, it's not eaten, Ena Nechelas, it's not completely burned on the Mizbeach altogether, meaning, again, it's not treated like a Minchas Kohen. What's the reason? And the Gemara answers, because the Pasuk says, it says that if you have a Mincha from a Kohen, it's entirely burned on the Mizbeach, it's not eaten. And we darshan that to be Kohen Velo Kohenis, that Halach applies by a Kohen specifically, it does not apply by a Kohenis. And then the Mishnah said, other distinctions, Kohenis Mishalelis, Kohen Ein Mishalel, that a Kohenis, so she can be profaned forever if she, if she engages in relations that's prohibited, so then she loses her status in terms of the kahuna. That doesn't happen by a Kohen. And the Gemara says, Minolan, from where do we know that? And the Gemara says, Damar Kratz, because the Pasuk says, Velo Yechalel Zaro Biyamav. It says this relationship that is forbidden. If a Kohen engages in that re- relationship, his children shouldn't be profaned. And we understand that to mean Zaro Mishalel, Vuhueno Mishal. We understand that his children are profaned, but he is not. And Rashi says, Lo Yechalel Zaro Bekohen Hanosip Sula Lekohen Ksiv. We're talking in this Pasuk about a Kohen that marries somebody who's disqualified to the kahuna. Uh, again, it's someone who's disqualified to the kuna. We understand she is, and we understand the children are profaned. The coin profanes both of them, but he himself is not mischal. That's what we understand from the Pasuk. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Kohenis metama v'chulu. It said that a Kohenis is allowed to become tamay meis, unlike a Kohen. My time, and what's the reason on our crutz? Because the Pasuk says, Emor alo Kohanim b'nei Aaron, b'nei Aaron v'lo b'nos Aaron. It says, b'nei Aaron, the sons of Aaron, not the daughters of Aaron, have this prohibition of Tomas meis. And then we said, Kohen ochel b'kotche kotchem. A Kohen is, is kotche kotchem, but that's not true by a Kohenis. Tichsiv, like it says, kol zocher b'vnei Aaron yochlan. It says, the males of the children of Aaron, they're the ones that eat it. And then the Mishnah said, Umah bein ish, ish, it said distinctions in the Mishnah between a man and a woman. And the Gemara now says, Tanu Rabban and the rabbis taught, Ish, it says Ish. Now the context of this Pasuk is talking about a man with Saras. Ainli elo ish. I only know that the halachas of tzaras apply to a man. Isha minayin. How do you know it's possible to have a tzaras by a woman? Kishu omer v'hatzarua asher bo harekan shnayim. When the pasuk says v'hatzarua asher bo, we understand it applies to both of them. And the Gemara says im kain matam and lomar ish. So if so, why does it say ish? For what halachas of tzaras? What halachas are exclusive by a man? And the Gemara explains le'inyan shalamata ish porei v'chulu. Like we said in the Mishnah, the halachas of letting the hair grow and the halachas of tearing the clothing those apply only to a man who has saras, it doesn't apply to a woman who has saras. 
And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Ho'ish madras beno benazir, ve'ino isha madras beno benazir. A man can make his son into a nazir, but that's not true by a, a, a woman, by a mother. Am Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Halachi ibn nazir. This is just a halacha l'moshim misinai by nazir. And the Gemara continues with the two dots. The Mishnah said, Ish megalech al nazir sava ve'ino isha megaleches al nazir savia. A, a man, a son is allowed to shave on the naziris of his father. That's bringing the carbonus that his father had designated for his own naziris. But that's not true by a woman. She cannot shave on the naziris of her father. And again, the Gemara says, Amr Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Halachi ibn nazir. This is halach l'moshim misinai by nazir. And then the Mishnah said, Oish Mekadesh has bito, Oish Mekadesh has bito, Oish Mekadesh has bito, a man, a father, is allowed to receive Kedushan on behalf of his daughter. That's not true by a woman, not true by a mother. And the Gemara says, Dechsev, that's also, it's written, it's learned from the Pasuk, as biti nasati, Loish Hazem, giving my daughter over to this man. And again, that's talking about the father and not talking about the mother. And the Gemara continues, the Mishnah said, Ha'ish mocher es bita, ve'ino ish, ha'isha mocher es bita. A man can sell his daughter as a maidservant. That's not true by a mother. She can't sell her daughter as a maidservant. Dechsev, as it's written in the Pasuk, ki kor ish es bita. It says again, a man is going to sell his daughter. And then the Mishnah said, Ha'ish niskal aram. It said, a man, when he gets skila, he's naked. My time, what's the reason? V'ragmu oso. It says oso in the Pasuk. My oso, and the Gemara says, what does it mean oso? Ilay ma oso, velo oso. If you're going to say that the halach in general of skila applies by a man and not by a woman, by him and not by her. Vaksib, but that's not true. The Pasuk says, Vaut say so eso isha hu, o eso isha hai. It says, you take out that man, you take out that woman. It applies to both men and women. And so therefore, ela oso velo ksuso. Rather, we darshan oso him. He's the one that is stoned without clothing. Velo oso velo ksuso. But when you stone her, you don't do it without clothing. And then the Mishnah said, Ho'ish nisla ve'in v'chulu. It said again, a man, when he gets stoned, he's hung. That's not true by a woman. My time was the reason I'm our crutz, because the Pasuk says, V'taliso so al eitz oso v'lo oso. It says you hang him, and so it says you hang him and not her. And finally, the Mishnah said, Ho'ish nimkar b'gnei v'aso ve'in o'isha nimkaris b'gnei v'aso. It said a man is sold. Let's say he steals something, he can't pay, so he gets sold as an avid ivri. That doesn't apply to a woman. My time was the reason I'm our crutz, because the Pasuk says, V'nimkar b'gnei v'aso. He gets sold for that which he stole. So we understand it's for that which he sold and not that which her, which she sold. And therefore, this halacha does not apply to women. We will return to you. This is the end of the third parak of Mesech Soto. If you're enjoying these videos and this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. And please take a look at the description box below to see how you can support this channel. And we will now begin the fourth parak of Mesech Soto. And the Mishnah says, Arusa v'shomeres yavam. If you have a woman who's an Arusa, she's betrothed. Or a woman who's awaiting Yibam, Rashi says, Arusa shekine lo aris. The case over here is, let's say the aris, let's say her husband warned her. And again, she's only an Arusa. Or v'shomeres yavam, shekine lo yavam. Let's say the brother-in-law, the yavam warned her. And again, she's just awaiting the Yibam. So in those situations, lo shosos, they cannot be made to drink the bitter waters. Rashi says, lo shosos, de matinu kra, because the Pasuk excludes them from drink from drinking the water of the sota. Velo no Notlos ksuba, but they also don't collect the ksuba. Rashi says, Velo notlos ksuba, she garma less or atzma olav, she nistera acharkinoi. The case over here is, is that he warned her, and then she went into the, the seclusion with the man after being warned. So in that case, she does lose the ksuba. To me, kinoi veiser lo imit, because she's not excluded from the concept of kinoi, the concept of being warned, and the idea that she then becomes prohibited to the husband, kinoi mefarish begemara, as will be explained in the Gemara, and that's why she does not collect the ksuba. And Rashi adds, Even if we do not hold of what Rav Hamnuna said, the Shomeris Yavam Shazinsa Mutaris Liyavama, that a Shomeris Yavam, let's say she has a Zanus, so then she's Mutaris to the Yavama, Nihid Mutaris, so granted that she's Mutaris, even if we say she's Mutaris, nevertheless, he doesn't need to marry a woman who's a Zona, and therefore she's going to lose her Ksuba. And the Mishnah continues, Shanamar, as the Pasuk says, Ashatiste Isha Tachas Isha. It says that the woman she strays when she's Tachas Isha, which means to say, as Rashi says, Tachas Isha Biyosheves Tachtov, meaning she's already married to him. She's not just an Arusa, Hakosim Adaber. That's what the Pasuk is speaking about. And that's why we understand from there, since it's Tachas Isha, Pratli Arusa Vishomeris Yavim. That comes to exclude an Arusa and a Shomeris Yavim. As we said, they don't drink from the Sota water. And the Mishnah continues, Almona le Kohen Gadol, let's say an Almona marries a Kohen Gadol, or Grusha the Chalutza, le Kohen Hedyor, or Grusha or Chalutza marries a Kohen Hedyor. These are all forbidden marriages. Mamzeres, let's say you have a situation of a Mamzeres to a Yisrael, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daf Chav Dalid, Ahmed Aleph.